Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here and in today's video I will be going over under the radar positions that I think the Washington Commanders should address in free agency or in the draft. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. I'm so close to 7,000 subscribers, so please help me get there. Also, hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. It really helps out the channel, and go ahead and follow my Twitter. I'm trying to get to 1,000 followers on there. First link in the description. Now, let's get right into the video. A lot of us can agree on the Washington Commanders' top needs this offseason. I mean, the most obvious one is quarterback. We all know that. But there's also some other obvious ones like middle linebacker. We definitely need an upgrade there because, you know, I like, you know, Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis has some potential. But those guys are likely both outside linebackers. So you're going to need a, you know, middle linebacker right there in the middle, whether it's free agency or or the draft, they're going to have to make an upgrade at the position. I think they need another weapon on offense, maybe a receiver um, to add to the receiving core in case Curtis Samuel goes down again or De'Ami Brown doesn't hit. And then, you know, they have other needs as well. Free safety could be one, especially if they can't get a deal done with Bobby McCain. But those are the obvious needs. Today, we will be focusing on under-the-radar positions that, you know, aren't a necessity aren't necessary you know the Washington commanders don't have to do it in the offseason but I think it would be a good idea to add to these positions so the first one I'm going to be talking about is offensive line specifically guard I think they're good at tackle you know they have Sam Cosme there they have Charles Leno there Cornelius Lucas is a free agent so maybe they resign him or maybe they go ahead sign someone else or draft the guy in the middle of the draft but I, I'm, I'm talking more specifically at guard because they likely will be losing all pro Brandon Sheriff I love Eric Flowers on the left we don't you know at left guard I don't think we really need to do anything there he's you know he was arguably our best offensive lineman our offensive line played really well last year even with all the injuries we had uh, but with Brandon Sheriff likely being gone I think we should add to that guard position because I like Schweitzer and I think he can be a good starter but you know you're losing one of your best offensive linemen so even if you're fine with Schweitzer starting I think you need to add another guy at least a depth guy so that if Schweitzer goes down you have more than just Sadiq Charles to cover you know left guard and right guard because I mean Sadiq's also going to be the backup left tackle and right tackle he's going to be backup pretty much for everything except for center so I think adding another guard whether it's a guy in free agency or in rounds like three, four in the draft, I think it would be a good idea. Guards can develop somewhat quickly, you know, in the first couple years. They can be starters in this league. And there are some guards in free agency. Obviously, Brandon Sheriff, Andrew Norwell, who obviously played for Carolina before, Lakin Tomlinson, who's going to get paid. I, I don't think we should go after a big, big name. Like, we don't need to be paying if we do decide to go after one in free agency. 10 plus million dollars. You can find really good guard play for very cheap. You just have to, you know, the front office just has to do their job. Bring in a guy like they did Wes Schweitzer, um, where they signed him to a, you know, I think it was a three year deal or maybe four years at a really cheap price. And he ended up being a pretty good player for them. And he still is. So maybe they can get a slightly better version of that. But I personally would be comfortable with Wes Schweitzer starting, but I think they should add another guy of that caliber to the offensive line room. So, because I mean, we saw this past season the amount of injuries we had. I mean, you know, Sam Cosme was out for a lot of the season. We had Cornelius Lucas go in and out of the lineup, or at least at least he was out for a little bit. Keith Ismail, or no, sorry, Chase Rulier got hurt. Wes Schweitzer got hurt. Tyler Larson got hurt. So having some, you know, depth is very, very crucial. And I think you got to take advantage of probably these last couple years with John Masco as your offensive line coach because I think he's 71. P. Hainer just retired and he's 70. So this might be, you know, John Masco's last year or maybe he'll do a couple more. But I think you can either sign a guy that's somewhat young in free agency or draft a guy. Draft a guy at, you know, 
in the third or fourth round, or maybe if you really, really, really like a player in the second, but I think that's pushing it a little bit, and have that guy, you know, have John Matsko develop that guy, and, you know, if he's ready, go ahead and start him right away, but if not, he can sit behind Wes Schweitzer or Sadiq Charles for a year, and eventually, he'll be your starter. Um, guards are relatively easy to develop, so guard, I think, is an underrated position that we should address. Doesn't need to be a starter, but at the very least, add some depth at that position so the next position that i think is an underrated need could be running back and no we're not looking for a replacement for antonio gibson but we're looking at a guy to maybe take the workload a li- away a little bit from gibson so he doesn't have to do you know fit 20 plus carries a game and you know maybe maybe he's fine doing that maybe he's fine doing 20 carries a game and you have a guy as an insurance policy if gibson goes down this guy can go ahead and carry the ball 15 20 times because you know mckissick i hope we bring him back but even if he's back he is not that guy we saw in 2020 in Gibson's rookie year when he did go down, McKissick really, I mean, he he had a couple games where he was able to carry it like 10 plus times, but he wasn't extremely effective. And Patterson, I am optimistic about him, and I think he can be a guy that gets, you know, can take over if Gibson does get hurt, but we don't know that for sure. So I don't think it would hurt at all to bring in a veteran. Bring in a veteran in free agency, whether whether it's Ronald Jones, Sony Michelle, you know, there's some good options out there in free agency. I made a video about it so you guys can go ahead and check that out. But there's some good options there, and you don't have to guarantee him a lot of money. You don't have to pay him a huge contract. And if Patterson is absolutely balling out in training camp and the preseason, and you think he can take on that role of you know that second back or the back that replaces Gibson if Gibson's hurt, then hey, you can go ahead and cut that veteran. I mean, they did it with Peyton Barber last year. They did it with they did it with others in the past. You know, Adrian Peterson the year before. So they definitely um, could do that if the, Patterson looks really good so that is another position that they could go after just so because gibson has dealt with a lot of injuries in the past i mean it's you look at this past season he only missed one game and that was because of the virus but he was dealing with a hip injury a shin injury a shoulder injury and a lot of other injuries as well so um that is something that i think that they could add and you know they could also add it in the draft i mean there's it would be hard to cut the guy. You would probably have to keep him on the roster, but you might be able to keep him as that fourth back, you know, keep him inactive. But, you know, f- rookie running backs are able to have an immediate impact, and a lot of the best rookie running backs are late round picks. You look at Elijah Mitchell last year, I believe he was like a sixth or seventh round pick. Uh, the year before, James Robinson, one of the best running backs in that year's class, he was an undrafted free agent. So a lot of running backs are late round picks and Washington could go ahead and draft the guy in the late rounds and hope he hits. Um, and yeah, they're able to they, they're able to make an impact right away. So another position I think that Washington should address this this offseason and no, it's not as a starter, but I do think they need to add another edge rusher and preferably a veteran edge rusher because, you know, Chase Young and Montez Sweat, I love them. I think of course they're going to be our starters this year, but we need someone that can be that veteran leader in that locker room, especially at the edge rusher position at the DN position because they didn't have that last year and I think part of, that's partly why they weren't as successful as they were the year before having Ryan Kerrigan showing him uh, you know Ryan Kerrigan showing them how to deal with certain things I mean he was in the NFL for a long time so he's able to help him with those things and they didn't have that guy this year yes they had some veterans on that D line you know Jonathan Allen's been in the league for a while but it's a different different position and no I don't think they need to go after Jadavion Clowney or any of the top guys in free agency but going after a veteran that you can get for relatively cheap i think would not be a bad idea um you don't even have to have him play that much but just have him as a roster spot and a guy that can if you need him to get some sacks for you like i like a guy like justin houston um i know he is old he is 33 years old or he will be when the season starts but he had five sacks last year and we don't need a ha- you know we don't need him to have five sacks we can have him as a rotational guy and if someone does get hurt 
um, he can go in there and step up. I think Olivier Vernon is another guy that's available, um, but he was, I don't think he played this year. Jason Pierre Paul's available, but he's more of a big name. There's some other guys as well. I think it's a position that they should address, and they can do in the draft as well. But I mean, a lot of the best edge rushers in the league are first, second, third round guys. So, um, you know, there aren't really that many great edge rushers or even good edge rushers that are like late round picks. There are exceptions, but not many. So I think, you know, I'd rather just go after a veteran instead of drafting a guy because unless it's really hard to get a good edge rusher in the sixth round or fifth round, whatever it is, it's very hard to do. So I think they should look at edge rusher in free agency i think it was a mistake they you know they made last year um, and i think that's something they should do another guy i think is a free agent melvin ingram i think that's another guy that they should look at adding he didn't have that many sacks this year but he was huge for the chiefs once they traded for him so those are kind of the underrated positions there's a couple others you know they could i mean free safety is an underrated one especially if biden kane is gone i think i mean that becomes a necessity and then some other positions as well or another position i don't think it's a huge need but tight end if they are pessimistic about logan thomas this year coming back totally healthy early on or at all uh, I think he will be back, but if they don't think he will be early on, then maybe you draft a guy because this tight end class is supposedly very, very deep, so you can get a starter in the third, fourth, fifth round, and if they do draft one, I hope they draft a pass catcher because they have that elite blocker in John Bates who's an okay pass catcher. Now do the opposite. Get a guy that's a great pass catcher and an okay to not so great blocker um, because you already have a great blocker in John Bates and Samus Reyes is a pretty good blocker. He just, you know, hasn't really developed yet as a pass catcher, but hopefully that will come um, with time, which, you know, it's going to take a while. He hasn't played much football, but that is it for today's video, kind of going over the underrated positions of need for the Washington Commanders. Let me know what you guys think are underrated positions of need for the Washington Commanders this offseason and how do you think we should address them. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace.